shine. In Matthew chapter number four, verse nineteen. The Bible well, in says, case you don't know, death, I'm here to tell you I'm that the word of God is true. Where and everything is promised. I know I am He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. You. Jesus is the answer. I the world today. Above him, there's no Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is the answer for the world. He's a blue. Jesus is the way. When you cannot do this way, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no one. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Sing it again, y'all. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the way. Amen. Yes, that is what happens to irresponsible people. Try your best. Be responsible. Add value everywhere you go. Do something beyond what you are asked. That is what it means to be responsible. Let's go now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, thank you for those examples. We have seen different people in the Bible who are responsible. So, one thing that's coming out is that it's not enough to be good. It's not enough to do what you are assigned to do. That is not simply what qualifies you as a responsible person. So how can we pin this? What precisely is the definition of responsibility? Hallelujah. Are we back online? Are we back online? So I want to quickly post to others that connect from different parts of the world. Please help me share. The more you share, the faster it reaches people. Pick up your phone, everybody that is connected now. Share it so that it's easy for others to connect so that I'm not the only one, only one doing it from this place now. So I can also concentrate and do the teaching. Share on different pages so that everybody can get it. Um, I should be able to have shared as much as I can. So now finish the rest. Let me concentrate. Sir, you said I should yes. do what, sir? Uh, you've given us the examples. We have seen different people. And we've discovered being responsible is not about being good or doing what you are hired or asked to do. So how can we pin it? What exactly is the definition of responsibility? All right. Number one. Responsibility or being responsible is the force that makes a person take initiative in accomplishing a task excellently. That thing that a force that comes on you that makes you make up your mind, I will not just do this thing, I will do it very well. Yes, very well, that's excellent. I will do it, in, you will know I'm the one who did this stuff. That is responsibility, being responsible. Number two, it is the power of the force that propels a person to be willing to pay extra price or any price to get the thing done. 
extra price or any price to make sure something is done. I don't care what I pass through, but this thing must be done. That is being responsible. Many people don't want to pay any price. A, is it my own? Nothing concerns me. Am I a Kenyan? I beg. I'm not from Kikuyu. I'm not Iluo. Let them sort themselves out. That is an irresponsible fellow. So you must be willing to go to any length. Any length to make the things done. That is a responsible person. Number three, it makes a person take up people's burden. You carry other people's load. A responsible people will think, how, what do I do to solve this person's problem? They discover the person has a problem. What do I do? Okay, let me sacrifice something from my own side to make this people, the person better. That is being responsible. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You, you are not selfish. You are selfless. You are not selfish. You are selfless. You think of how to add value to someone. You think of what you can lose to gain this person and make this person gain more. Yes. That is being responsible. Many times it's very painful. People don't like doing it. So they say that is my money. My hard-earned money. I will not give this one. In fact, it didn't even make me happy before. No. <laughs> I will not go out of my way to connect him. No way. What if I connect him and he becomes richer than me? I'm not connecting him. Who did it for me? Uh, who connected me? Let him suffer and get connected too. So the reverse, that is being irresponsible. Now it limits in life for you to take somebody up, you will need to climb up yourself. Yes. Oh, you didn't hear me. For you to go up and, and cameraman, wake up. I want to do something. Now, um, um, let me try to take Ezekiel up. Ezekiel, come, let me take you up. Now, imagine I want to take Ezekiel up this altar. Um, the cameraman, watch me and follow me very well. I don't want you to behave like, uh, like that. Behave well. Now, imagine Ezekiel is down here and I want to take Ezekiel up. See, Ezekiel's size and my size. You know, his size is bigger than my size. The guy has eaten a lot of good food, <laughs> omena, and many good things. Now, what is the fastest way to bring Ezekiel here? If I want Ezekiel to come up, I must first go up, climb up first, and then help Ezekiel up. It's easier. Are you seeing now? It's yes, easier. Sir. I go up first, then bring Ezekiel up. I go up again, then bring him up. Because, let's go down again. If Ezekiel was down, and I want to bring Ezekiel up from the back, it might not be possible. Why? If I push Ezekiel, and Ezekiel fall, have you understood that all of us will be in the pit? So the fastest and the easiest way is that I go up first, and it's easy to drag him. Drag him. Drag him. Look at him, he's up. Now listen, who came up first? You who was Me. After I came up first, then it's easy for me to show Ezekiel the way. Listen carefully. For you to ever go up in life, you must always have God as along with you because God will always give you the privilege of being number one. Well, that's what it is. And you are not losing anything. Your space is already there before you create a space for him. There's nothing you're losing. You're already up. You cannot be down and take this guy up. The two of you will collapse. You must go up first before you take him up. Responsibilities, I made up my mind. As I go up, I will take Ezekiel with me. Now, do you know that if mistaken, I want to fall, Ezekiel will push me up because my staying up is needed. He needed it. Since the more I go up, the more he goes up. Am I right? You will not allow me for that. Will they allow me for? Because if I fall, all of us can fall and go down. So what you do is, hey, Muse, you can't fall. Hey, you, you, you can't hold me there. In fact, helping others up secures you. If you are clapping, clap very well so that it shows you are appreciative. Not that you are an ingrate. Clap well. Use your hand. Eh, use it. It's not paining you. Then, and then learn the lesson. Always. See, whatever you appreciate does not depreciate. All right. Let's go again. Yes, sir. Now, number four. It is the spirit that makes a person never to blame anyone for his predicament. If you are blaming someone for your predicament, you are an irresponsible person. Every responsible person takes responsibility for whatever went wrong and tries to make it right. I made a mistake. That's by the fact that many factors contributed to it. I take responsibility, sir. 
give me another opportunity to make it right. And then you make it right. But when you're always blaming someone, your journey to destiny is limited. Number five, it is the spirit that makes a person assume ownership and act as the owner of a venture. You take charge. Say, no, here, I don't want this nonsense done here. Remember, you're an employee there. Yes. And you say, I don't want this nonsense done here. The writing must be done. And I insist on the writing. The sign that you're responsible. But I am not the owner of this place. Whatever they like, let them do. doesn't concern me. Me, I'm doing my own well. If they like to scatter, let them scatter it. Mm, doesn't concern me. You are irresponsible. Number six, it is the spirit of giving, not receiving only. You are the one that now sees where you are as the place where you can give. Can you imagine that girl, a slave, gave solution to the master, the senior. There is no position you are that you cannot give. Every position you find yourself, no matter how small it is, you can give. That position you find yourself is an opportunity for you to give. And you can give to anybody, both the high and the mighty. But when you look down on yourself, say, ah, look at me, small me, I'm just a maid, slave. What can I give to the organic and the general? Let me just humble myself and stay here. We will never have heard of that girl today. Today we are reading about her in the Bible. God made sure her, she entered the Bible. Why? Because she gave solution to somebody. She was responsible. All right, let's go a little bit more. See, if you cannot give money, you can give your services. Everybody has something to give on earth. There's nobody that doesn't have anything to give. That's where God made it to be. Everybody has something to give. Number seven. It is the spirit of never giving up till success is achieved. Never giving up. You are resolute. Until this thing is well done, I'm not living here. And you start pushing it. Irresponsible people go on holiday very fast. When it is five o'clock, they tell you, it's five o'clock, I need to leave. I'm getting out. Hey, this is not my father's house. I have to go and take care of my family, my life, my this and that one. That's an irresponsible person. A responsible person will say, since we've started and we have not finished, if we stop, the materials can spoil. Let us safeguard the material by working some extra hours to make it work well so that the thing is not spoiled. That is a responsible fair person. Finish what you start. Let us finish it. No matter the price we pay, let's pay that price and finish it so we can now rest. If we rest now, the materials may be wasted. The effort may be a wasted effort. Let's try our best. And the beast push on until it is done. Here is also a person who say, excuse me, it's not my father's house. Mm. Uh, hey, uh, hi. I make it cool, you, Jerry. Hey. Uh, this is Luo man's job. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Now I'm seeing yes. it. That is, uh, maybe you can say that is why God rested when he finished creation. He yes, he did not rest before. Uh -huh. He did not rest before the, he finished. He rested after, after he finished. Yes. All right, number eight. It is the spirit that makes one respond to other people's problem as if it is theirs. You respond to another man's problem as if it's your own. You are helping them to carry the tire. You are helping them to do this and that one. But somebody else will say, it doesn't concern me. He pays, I work. No pay, no work. Pay, I work. He doesn't pay, he will work his goal. <laughs> Are you following me, somebody? Number eight, it is the spirit that makes one respond. Okay. Uh, number nine, it is the spirit that makes a person dependable. People can depend on you. When you are around, somebody can go and sleep and say, hey, that, that guy's around, I'm okay. Let him carry on the work. I know he will do it well. Not when you are around. They are still monitoring you because you are either a thief or you are very lazy. When they go away from sight, you, you will relax. See, I, the, the four man is not around. I'm, hey, okay. Let's relax. You know, I remember when they were fixing one portion of the, of the building. I came and I asked, why did they fix this one in one day and they have not fixed this one in one day? The report that reached me was that the guys that was employed by the welder were sleeping when the welder drove out. Physically, in this church, they took their space somewhere and relaxed and took off. And were between heaven and earth. And the job was not done. The delay was there. And they were being paid every day for sleeping. It was not supervised. Uh, because the supervisor just went out. See, if you need to be supervised before you do your job well, you are irresponsible. You are not a good person. You have very bad. They need to push you and say, hey, why haven't you done it? And they shout on you. Insult your grandfather. Ca call you and say, come and stand here. Answer. Uh, you are very useless fellow. You will never go far. 
I'm not cursing you. I'm telling you what will happen. It has already happened. You, you are, in fact, check your life. You are not going far. You are already retarded. That you don't know what to do. The foreman or the leader or somebody needs to harass you. You are finished already. Your brain is remaining like that of a chicken or something. <laughs> you are, it's a diminished. If you already know your job and your professional, don't allow people to tell you what to do. Do it with speed. Don't do it slowly. And they are now begging you because of the extra money you want to collect by being slow. By being slow, your destiny will become slow. Where you should be in 10 years time, you'll be there after 30 years. Whatever a man sow it, that shall he reap. You have sown it. You are now slow. You now push it a bit. Push it a bit. That's how your life will remain in, the, in, 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 the, in obscurity. In the village, all your mates would have gone to London. They would come back with heavy wealth. They would have met big people all over. They would have achieved great things. But because you are retarded, you can never miss such people. At the age of 19, when you guys are comparing notes, all your teeth are falling off, and there's no way they can fix it. <laughs> you are so poor and laid back that there's yes. nothing to do to help you. Others, God has lifted them. They are, you are now begging them to remember you at old age. Why? Because you sowed a wicked seed when you are young. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Number yes. 10. It is the spirit that makes a person reliable. A responsible person is very reliable. An irresponsible person is never reliable. Number 11. It is the spirit that makes a person committed. A responsible person is committed. An irresponsible person is not committed. See, it doesn't concern me. What concerns me with the matter? Is it my, is it my work? Am I a member of the church? Ah, what? Ah, what? And he charges back at church. Excuse me. What, what is it? I, I've done my best. In fact, hey, we must lay 20 blocks per day. I've laid 21 blocks. So, excuse me. Manage yourself. Why? That's the spirit of being irresponsible. They are not committed to nothing. In fact, they can get out of the job immediately. Somebody that can walk out of the office and resign now is an irresponsible person. Yes. Somebody that will not think, if I leave, what will happen? Hope I will not destroy the company. Somebody that is happy. That the company is being destroyed because he left. That is an irresponsible person. person. Yes. He said, yes, I will, I, will, I will resign. I will walk out now. He will be begging me. And he walks out. And he's checking from afar off to see the company failing. He's asking other people, what happened? Uh -huh. They are looking for me. Yes, I'm making them understand that there are levels here. You will soon die of poverty because that company will recover and start moving forward. It's a company. You, hunger will deal with you. And you have sown the seed. They will start sacking you everywhere around the world. Everywhere you go to. You only look for reason to make you redundant, to clear you because you have a wicked heart. Because the seed you sow there, you will sow it again. People will start marking you from front. They keep chasing this guy. This guy must have a bad character. Yes, sir. Are you understanding that? Yes, sir. That? Number 12. It is the spirit that makes a man behave maturely. You behave like a mature person. You behave like the father of everybody. You feel like everybody reports to you. You feed them. You feel like everybody that needs anything should come to me. That is responsibility. But when people come to say, Hey, am I your father? Am I the one that gave out to you? <laughs> that is being irresponsible. Number 13. It brings out the father and the mother in you. It brings out the father and the mother in you. Number 14. It is the spirit that makes you a burden bearer and very trustworthy. A burden bearer that is very trustworthy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Thank you for that. So for me, one of the key things that comes out is responsibility is about taking on. Taking on beyond what you are expected to. Taking on beyond what is required of you. That is the main thing for me I've seen that brings out that aspect of responsibility. So having defined responsibility, I believe now, we have a better understanding of what it is. And now, we, can we see the characteristics of and beyond and uh, attached to it, the benefits? Why is this, this being responsible? Of what benefit is it to me as a child of God? Of what benefit is it to me? Since you've told me, you've told us that we should take on the other person's trouble. We should take on their their weights, whatever is hurting them. It's about, like in the case of this maid who took on the responsibility of Naaman's leprosy. She didn't announce it, but she took on a responsibility that whether or not she did it, nobody would have noticed that it would not have concerned her. But she went out of her way. So what 
benefit do we see out of this? No, there are different characteristics. Yes, sir. Before we get to the benefits. The characteristics. Characteristics that makes people know you are responsible. Yes. Number one, excellence in all you do. Excellence in everything you do is a sign that you are a responsible person. But when anything you do is haphazard, it's a sign you are irresponsible. Whenever you do things, you do it well. In fact, very well, beyond expectation, is a sign that you are responsible. Responsible people always love to do things well, not just do it and they don't finish it. And they say, I will do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. And when we are cleaning up, we clean it up. Clean it now. Every responsible person does it and does it well. It doesn't work by people's timetable. He worked by his own timetable to make sure things are done well. Excellence. Number two, grace to complete everything you start well. That is responsible person. Grace to complete everything you start. Not tomorrow will continue. Mm -mm. Let us finish. Then tomorrow we rest. Grace to complete. If you don't have that grace to complete, you are an irresponsible person. Because what if you come back and everything is destroyed? All that you've done is a waste. You start afresh again. Now you say, it's not my cost. It's the cost of the owner. We have to rest. We have to rest to Jerry. The same will happen to you. When you are building your own house, some people will destroy it and tell you it's not our cost. It is cost. Remember, you sow the seed. Number three, seeing burden bearing as a divine assignment. You will see carrying people's burden as an assignment from God and you start helping people. You will begin to help them. You will bear their burden and you see it as a divine assignment that God sent you. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says there were 12 men. That were bearing the body for Solomon. And they saw it as their divine assignment. They did it until Solomon died. Every year they were the ones in charge of every food. Food in Solomon's house. The Bible said God prospered these people in a serious way. Because they became body bearers. First Kings chapter 4. Verse 7 and verse 27. They became body bearers. When you see it as your duty. And you do it well. Not a. Hey, I'm just a member. I am just a member of the church. And they send me all this errand. Why? For what? Why must I be running it? I'm just a member. In fact, I came to visit them. It is his church. I came to your church. Hey, allow me rest. That you are, you are, you are not you a member yet. I am a member of a Anglican PCA, this and that one, and they make it very long. So you can be afraid of them. <laughs> so it's not about what I will get out of it. It's about doing it because it, it satisfies me. my conscience. I'm happy to do it. That is my nature now. Now, if you do that, God will raise up people for you also who will never be satisfied until you are happy. The reason why people are happy that you are sad is because you're always happy when others are not satisfied. So God will start raising for you people that will stand by you until you succeed. People that will keep calling you. Is the money enough? I have some more. Is this not enough? I want to give you more. People that will be happy, you have many land. Not the one that will say, ah, he has one land. Let him have that or let give somebody else. People that will give you more and more house, more clothes, and they'll be happy to see you dress well. Are you understanding me? Yes. Because the seed you have sown. Yes, Number four, reliability. A responsible person is reliable, sir. A res you can rely on, you can go and sleep. What is around? Reliability. The Bible says this man did not know what he ate or what he drank except what Joseph did. Joseph was very reliable that the man was not, he, was, he did not know his accounts anymore. Joseph knew all the accounts and he was not stealing from them. Joseph was the one who operated the account of the Potiphar's family. Potiphar does not know how much he has anymore except Joseph. That is a man that is reliable. That guy is responsible. Number five, honesty and no entitlement spirit. You are very honest and you are not saying, ah, they should praise me. They need to acknowledge me in church and say, ah, ladies and gentlemen, we need to announce that Ezekiel is the most uh, uh, honest person here. They say, hey, <laughs> let him sit in the front. He now sit there. Now spread. He now spread like women. Now spread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. No entitlement spirit. You do it because your character, not because they need to clap for you in church. Not because they need to give you a medal. You know, there was a time I used to give awards to the best serving uh, uh, 
a worker in church. I used to do that. After a while, I stopped. Because I would not want people to begin to serve because of the medal. Yes. Because somebody told me one day that, Sir, I have five medals in this church. I have served. Ah. <laughs> so that medal is a sign that is I said, No, let me stop this nonsense. Because one day you say, I have ten medals, I should be the pastor now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. They have Amen. served. I have five medals. That is how I have worked very hard. And you know it. That's why you are giving me medal. Somebody said that to me. That's when I said, no, no, no. Let's stop this medal. You serve God, God blesses you. Hallelujah. Amen. Number six, faithfulness is a sign that you are responsible. Faithful. The Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 6, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But a faithful man who can find faithful people are scarce. Faithful people are scarce. You tell them to do the thing and they do it well. And money remains and they bring the money back. So people are scarce. The rest, they put their pocket. Eat it and walk away. Number seven. The seventh sign that you are responsible is accountability in stewardship. You are accountable. You bring back the remaining materials. You get some you get to where they are selling it cheaper and then you bring the remaining money. That, uh, the thing is being sold for 30000 but I got it for 22000 sir. 8000 is here, sir. This is it. Not, sir, some money was remaining, but I used it for transport. And when they check, it is 8000 and your transport was 80 bob. <laughs> miscellaneous expenses. Yes, nice, miscellaneous <laughs> expenses. Uh, other business and so on and so forth. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1 to 2, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Accountability as a steward. We are able to account that 8,000 is remaining. We, are, we can use it for this or for that or for that. Or, sir, you don't need to pay for this one anymore. This one had paid for it because I got some money from you. Not, ah, that is my money. I use my brain. I use my brain to get the discount. So it's my money. You are a thief. You will not go fast. Somebody will do the same for you. They will use their brain to collect money from you too. <laughs> All right. The next one, number eight. Constant and consistency. A reliable, a responsible person will be constant and consistent. Not today, he's appearing. The next time you can't find him for a long time. He appears again. He yeah, does grab, grab, grab. You clap for him. The next thing he has taken off again. People who are responsible are constant and consistent. They are there, ever there. Go and sleep. The guy is there, sir. He's there, sir. He will tell you, I'm standing with you, standing with you. Not that I'm standing with you in the mouth and I'm not standing with you in the heart. Yes. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, it says, Preach the word, be instant in season. Another verse says, Be constant in season and out of season. That is a sign that you are responsible. When you are constant in season and out of season. Not when you are in church, you are very reliable. When you are out of church, you are a very bad fellow. In your place of work, you are a Margaret Thatcher. You are a tyrant. Everybody fears you. But in church, you are very holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are the one that knows how to put it well for us when we are singing the hymn. Lord, Lord. We think you are, you are on your way to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Constant and consistent. Instant in season and out of season. Everywhere we find you, you are the same. Everywhere. Whether you are wearing jeans or wearing suit, you are the same person. Not because of what you are wearing, you are not changing. Number nine, obedient. A responsible person is obedient. An irresponsible person is arrogant. He will attack you back and say, what? Ah, I'm the one to do all. Am I the only one in church? <laughs> Am I the only one in this office? Ah, for what? As an irresponsible person. He will go and be complaining in one corner. Eh, they told me to do it. Can you imagine? They didn't tell Stephen to do it. Oh, it's me they told. Mm. He will be grumbling. And irresponsible, that's his character. He will not be able to speak out. Number 10. Shifting of goalposts. The person does not shift goalposts. We agreed. We are finishing this on Thursday. Thursday it is finished. Not that uh, we'll finish it tomorrow. Uh, in fact, by Monday. That Tuesday. When you are a responsible person, you face the target. In fact, you do before the target, not after the target. 
Responsibility determine, demands timing. Irresponsible people are procrastinators. They shift the goalpost. We'll do it later. We'll get there later. It's okay. That's how they keep shifting till later until they die. Because if I become a culture, you keep doing it. I'll marry later. We'll have baby later. If they want to discover that you have died later. <laughs> so, but responsible people are time conscious people. They hit it on time. No shifting of goalposts. Yes. Number 11, they have large hearts. Responsible people have large hearts to accommodate many things. And they will not react badly. Large hearts, like Solomon. So find out the first king chapter 4 verse 29 to 30. Now they are time conscious. Imagine that lady did not tell them until Naaman died. And she said, hey, Yeah, how I knew I would have told you that if Naaman went to Israel, he would have been killed. But Naaman just died and is now a lying in state. And they go to view his body. And she's not crying. Eh, eh, I would have said it too. It's too late. Responsible people are time conscious people they keep to time the bible says everything has an appointed time number 13 discipline they are disciplined people they are not bastards they are sons they don't behave like aliens they don't disconnect they say I'm, I, I'm not part of them i only came to help them to visit them they are part and parcel of everything anywhere they enter that is the reason. Somebody was asking me, how come everywhere they invite you, they keep inviting you, they keep inviting you because, so I answered and said, whenever I get there, I become part of them. I don't go there as a guest minister. Then I'm posing somewhere. Uh -uh. I mix up with them, make the things happen better in their church. When I go, they say, we want that guy. But when I try to pretend as if you know everything, you are the professional, they will soon show you the way out. They will get people who are more homely, people who are more humanly with them, who can flow with them. Hallelujah. This is not a bastard. Number 14, bearing witness of the truth. Responsible people always bear witness of the truth. When truth is said, they say that is the truth. Not when truth is said, they pretend they don't know that's the truth. I've met a lot of people like that. When they know this is the truth, they pretend, hey, I don't want to die before my time. Before I go and tell them it is the truth, and they now arrest me with him. Let me just shut up and be looking. Hey, I don't know. One of the great signs of being responsible is bearing witness of the truth. And not being neutral or telling lies. Being neutral is a sign you are an irresponsible person. When something is going wrong and you quickly dodge and you behave like you are not part of them, you are an irresponsible person. Or when something is going wrong and you go to the negative and say, I don't know, I am not aware, you are irresponsible. Responsible people always bear witness of the truth. Number 15, they are bold and courageous. Responsible people are bold and courageous people. Very bold. If I perish, I perish. However, they want it, fine. I am taking this responsibility on. If it will take my life, fine. Let it be on record that I took it on. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He responsible with me. I don't want to lose my life. Oh, my lifetime. I will give God my lifetime. I'm not ready to die. <laughs> they hold their life very tight. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. All right. Now let me run through the benefits. The benefits, benefits of, of being responsible. responsible. Yes. Our time is so fast spent. This slide it took. Got us short and all that. But let me run through. If you read Matthew chapter 25, verse 20 to 23, the Bible says, And so he that I received five talents came and brought other talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest to me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. The Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. From there, discover that those who are responsible multiplied what they were given and then they were promoted. If you are not able to multiply your assignment, make the place you are given, your office, better, you are irresponsible. The irresponsible one, there's one of them that was irresponsible. He went to hide the thing and brought it back the way they gave him. Jesus said, take it from him and push him into outer darkness. 
if you do only what you are told to do, you are useless. They are supposed to push you out into outer darkness. You will lose your job. But if you multiply what you are given, make it better than you met it, your promotion will come. Yeah. So the reward is lifting, promotion, at next level, upgrade in life. Let me now pull it out. Now, I want to make you understand something. One of the greatest reward of being responsible is more responsibility. And many lazy people don't like that one. One of the greatest reward of being responsible is more responsibility. It will increase your work. Lazy people don't like it. So lazy people can never be responsible. For example, when Joseph became very responsible with the little assignment they gave him, they made him overseer. Yeah. It was not for him to sit down and say, I'm overseer. What it meant was that if there were seven departments in Potiphar's house and he succeeded in running one department, they made him head of seven. So he had sleepless nights. So one of the rewards of being responsible is getting more, more responsibility. responsibility. So maybe if you can throw in a quick question. Yes. Do responsible people experience challenges? Or failure, or is it now I've taken on more, I've given more, and I'll keep growing? Say that again. Do responsible, Do responsible people experience challenges or failure along the way because they are going above and beyond? They are stretching beyond their capacity or stretching beyond what they were meant to do. Do they experience any challenge in that, or simply by stretching, they will expand and get better? Now, the answer is capital yes. They experience challenges, but because of their spirit, they conquer challenges very fast. Because of the spirit of being responsible, they conquer the challenges very fast. Well, now, let me use an example. When we were building the children's church at the back there, we experienced a challenge. We got a carpenter that fixed poles under the decking, and he used only one nail to join wood, like five or six wood. When the people that were about to pour the concrete came and began to pour the concrete, the wood gave way because it was held. It was joined by only one nail. One. Gave way so everything poured on the floor. It was a major challenge. And that time there was no money. There was no money to waste. I fasted seriously to get that money. Sir. It was very painful. Now because of being responsible, I made up my mind that I would teach the devil a lesson. By making the building taller than what they thought. And I began. That is how you see we put the next deck in, put the next one, but we are now more careful. Put the third one, put the fourth one, and put the fifth one. So, see, the experience challenge is a major challenge. I had to locate, cough out another $1,000 to repair the damage, sir. Yes, sir. But it did not stop me, sir. The experience challenges. But because of the spirit of being responsible, they break out of the challenge and get better. In fact, challenges make them sharper and better. In fact, challenges becomes a fuel for them to get better. In fact, challenges become fertilizer. It fertilizes them to flourish. flourish. So they will always encounter challenges that will provoke the best in them to come out. Now, whenever you encounter challenges and you slow down, you are very responsible. You have handed over your life to the devil. He will rule you. But when you encounter challenges, say, devil, thank you for the challenge. This is a fertilizer. I will teach you a lesson. God gives you a push because of your spirit. Being responsible is the spirit. If you don't have that spirit, you don't have it. May God give everyone watching and everyone here life the spirit of being responsible in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I said it's more responsibility. Did I answer you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Number two, higher position. Rewards. Higher position. That one is obvious. Higher position is higher responsibility. Number three, security of your status. Others can be sacked, but not you. Others can be kicked out, but not you. Others can be thrown out. Nobody can throw you out. Why? Because you are very responsible. They will, say, they will call you and say, sit here. They will not call the rest of the workers to stay. They, including the, those that, that were employed before you. They will tell them to stand in front and say, hey, in view of what is going on, we have decided to sack all of you. <laughs> you become part of the management because you are responsible. Then they kick out the rest. Yes. B, 
being responsible makes you one of the managers. So when they want to sack the rest, they will take you up and say, we have decided to make the rest of you redundant because of coronavirus. <laughs> what made your status secure? Being responsible. responsible. Number four, express and regular promotion. Express and regular. Immediately, they made him an overseer. Why? Did he go to school of overseership? No. Responsibility even covers your weaknesses. Covers your deficiencies and your inadequacies. Be responsible. Number five, wealth and riches unrestricted. They will give you anything. When you ask, take it. When you need it, take it. Why? Because you are responsible. When you are irresponsible, people hide things from you and disconnect from you. They restrict you from having access to resources. Number six, unrestricted access to strong rooms. Where others cannot enter, you, can, you will enter there cheaply. Why? Because you are responsible. Joseph was given access to the master bedroom. Others don't enter there. Why did they give him access? He was responsible. Others don't enter to such places. Your job finishes at the corridor. But Joseph enters the bedroom. Why? Because he was responsible. When you are responsible, you are given access to strong rooms. Number seven, trust and confidence. People will trust you and have confidence in you. You may not be an expert, but they will trust you. You may not know everything. They say it's okay. He is responsible. Hallelujah. Number eight, open hearts, open doors, and open gates. People will open their hearts to you. They will tell you things they will never have told anybody else because you are responsible. No matter your age, they will open their doors wide to you. Anytime you can come in, they will open their gates to you. Why? Because you are responsible. But when you are not responsible, you say, why did you come by this time? Why are you here by this time? Must you come by this time? Ah, shouldn't I rest? But when you are responsible, oh, thank you for coming. Please come inside, come inside, come inside. So I'm resting, but I will listen to you. Why? You are responsible. It gives you access. Number nine, greater command and control. They will now give you greater command and control over others because you are responsible. Number ten, higher leadership authority. They will now say, everybody submit to him. If anybody must move, it is at his command. That was what they did to Joseph. They said, Nobody will raise their leg or their foot in Egypt except Joseph permits them because he was a responsible person. Irresponsible, they say, in fact, from today, don't move towards that area. If I see you around that area, they will restrict you the more. I say, yeah, you're staying around there. This is your area. If you move, then they will not give somebody else power to deal with you if you move and give him what belongs to you. Why? Because you are not responsible. Responsible are given greater jurisdiction to operate as a leader. Number 11, greater honor and respect. When you come, people are shaking because you have power to handle them. Because they've given it to you to do so. Because you are a responsible person. All right? The next one is constant enlargement of your territory. They'll keep enlarging your territory, giving you more land, more houses, more persons to govern. Why? Because you are responsible. Number 13, ever profitable life. Your life will be very profitable. Ever profitable, good things will be happening to you, nyafu, nyafu. Better things will be coming your way. Whenever the, any good thing happens, they will remember you. They say, let me buy one for myself and for my staff. Why? Because it's responsible. The others, they'll find their way. They'll keep giving better life. Your life will be profitable. Whenever anything good lands, you are number one to be remembered. Why? Because you are responsible. People will be having plans in their heart, good plans in their heart for you. Ah, the way this guy is working. I will retain him in this office. I will create a position for him. Because they can do it. The reason why they tell you there's no vacancy is because you are irresponsible. If you are responsible, they will create a position for you in any office. Every office has space for you. The reason why there's no space for you is because you are irresponsible. The opportunity you had, you useless it. You didn't use it well. All right, number 14. Reliable, confident, and counselor to hire mighty people. You become a counselor and a confidant to hire mighty people. They will always want to consult you. I just want to tell you what they want to do, to hear your side, because you are responsible. Not because you are a professional counselor. No way. Responsible. Alright? Number 15. Greater exposure and experience. Whenever they want to go to even places that doesn't concern you, say, let's go together. Why? Because they can confide in you. Why? Because they know you are reliable. They take you with them. Say, let's go and see. Say, let's go and see such and such aircraft that I just bought. And you are a carpenter. 
What concerns the carpenter with the aircraft? Because the guy is responsible. Let's go and see. I, I just built a house. And you're a shoemaker. Come and see. Come and see the house. Why are you seeing the house? Responsible. House help. Say, come, 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 come. Kuja, kuja, pa. That's my right hand man. And you're wondering. I didn't even go to school. You're not a right hand man to an important man. Why? Responsibility. I think I need to stop here. I think I've, I've downloaded enough. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you for that. Um, maybe you can put it this way. You said it's a spirit. How can I get it? By making up your mind to be responsible. And start practicing it. I try to check how do I get this spirit? How? It's you making up your mind. I want to be responsible from today. The thing enters you. Wham! And you start practicing. That's the way it works. That is the way it works. Or you see somebody who's responsible, the way he's behaving, you start behaving that way. I'm telling you, there's no need for them to lay hands on you and pour until you receive responsibility. Ah. <laughs> and lay hands, take it. It doesn't enter that way. Yeah. This one, you will make up your mind today that from now, I'll be very responsible. I will never disappoint anybody again. I will not be a liar. I will not shift goalposts. Anywhere I walk, I will be indispensable. No matter with the sack, I am unsackable. I will make sure I'm unsackable. And they start working hard, making things well, doing things well, doing beyond what you expected. I'm telling you that's all. And you have it. I'm telling you. Make up your mind. One, two, act that way. And keep acting that way for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you're responsible for being responsible. I'm telling you. It's your responsibility. Yeah. Nobody will be blamed for you not being responsible. When you get to the judgment day, they will judge you for either being responsible or being irresponsible on the last day. And that is the truth. So make up your mind to be very responsible today. And there are those who have made up their mind. If you have made up your mind to be responsible, raise your hand. Let me see you. Hallelujah. Lift up. Say, say after me, say in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. I commit myself, I commit myself to be a responsible citizen a responsible citizen of this church, this church, of this nation, of this nation, and of my generation. And of my generation. I will not disappoint heaven. I will not disappoint. Heaven. I will not disappoint my generation. I will not disappoint my generation. And I will not disappoint myself. And I will not disappoint. From myself. henceforth, from henceforth, I take on, I take up the spirit, the spirit of being responsible. Of being responsible. I will never be. I will never be irresponsible. Irresponsible. Even for one minute. Even for one minute. Again. Today, from today, from today, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus, I will start acting. I will start acting like a responsible person. Like a responsible. Person. I will never regret. I will never regret being responsible. Being responsible. I will blame no one. I will blame no one for anything around me. For anything around from today. Me. From today, I take responsibility. I take responsibility in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Father, Christ. from today. Father, from today, hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. I will not disappoint you. I will not disappoint Thank you. you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. Come on, put amen. your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you responsible? Can we depend on you? Are you reliable? Allow him to answer his mind. Hallelujah. We're going to give our offerings right now and then we'll close the first service. Then the teaching will take 20 minutes so that everywhere will be prepared for the second service, which starts. Um, okay, the teaching can take its normal course because we are on time. Uh, the second service will start a few minutes to one because we shifted it so that all other people that are coming to join us will be able to join us. So as soon as we finish teaching, you move forward and take your seat. Because the second service will be serious service, ordination service. Have you understood? Lift up your offerings. If you are using the Empesa Pay Bill, use 821 430. 821 430 as a pay bill. If you have yours physically, just raise it up. If it is your tithe, you can take an envelope and put it in the envelope, and God will surely bless you, sir. Take responsibility for your offering. Don't say, I will give you later, or I'll give you by mistake. Don't give your offering by mistake. Give it deliberately. Responsible people do things deliberately. Irresponsible people do things by accident. They wait for an accident to occur. Don't wait. Do it deliberately. The pay bill number is 
So go ahead, send it in. Don't tell somebody to give offering on your behalf. Give it. Be responsible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Never you blame anybody for going anywhere late. He's being responsible. Do something to make yourself early. Don't blame anyone for missing an appointment. Do your best to meet the appointment. That's the way it works. All right. If you let us pray on the offering. Father, we thank you for the offering. We ask, O oh God, that you receive it. Everyone giving must be prosperous from today. All those who have taken responsibility and initiative to give an offering. Lord, I'm asking, O oh God, that from henceforth they will attract prosperity by the act that they have displayed right now to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. All right, what have you learned today? I need four people on this side four people on that side. What have you learned today? If you, are, if you have learned something, raise your hand. If you did not learn, make sure your hands are down so we can know you didn't learn anything today. So if you learned something, raise up your hand so we can see you. All those who learned something, raise your hand. If you did not learn, don't raise your hand so we know you that you are the one that didn't learn anything. I'm waiting. I'm, I'll give you a number. If you learned something, raise your hand. You did not learn, put down your hand. Pastor Dennis, are you in the studio and they are rolling the camera like that and you are alive? Be responsible, sir. Be very responsible, sir. All right. My sister, you are number one. My sister, you are number two. My sister, there is number three. You, you are number four. Sir, you are number one on this side. Nobody learned something on this side. What happened to everybody here? Ma, you are number two, Pastor Grace. I need two more persons on this side. Imani, you are number three. I need one more person. And you are number four. All right. Start. Number one. We are on this side now. Yes, sir. I have learned that for you to give up, you must drag others to go up with you because it is just a privilege that you are given to be number one. Thank you. God bless you. For you to be up, allow us to come up to thank you. Yes. Put the mic close to your mouth. And make sure the mic is on, Brother Ezekiel. There. They identify a problem and fix it no matter the position they occupy, whether they are house help or they are the chief controller. Number three. Number greatest reward of for being responsible is more responsibility. The greatest reward is more responsibility. Number four. Ah. She's one that raised up her hand. You are speaking on her behalf. Did you raise up your hand? I didn't see your hand. I saw Sister Beth. And which of the small boys? Okay, I'll come to him. If that woman is number four, then I will allow you. Ah, you now jump and carry the microphone if I catch you. <laughs> Go ahead, man. I've learned that responsibility will always create a room and office for you anywhere. Anywhere. If you are responsible, you will forever have a space anywhere you enter. Yes, now go ahead. Put the mic close to your mouth so they can hear your voice. I have learned that responsibility Faithful and disciplined people. They, you don't give them deposit and they eat it. They use it to do the work and they now get their profit. Where's the young man? Learn that responsible person must be fearless. 
will be what? Reliable. Okay, okay. Reliable. All right, come to this side. Yeah, that moves there. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've learned that uh, responsible people are trustworthy. They are trustworthy. Very dependable, sir. You said it like a responsible man, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I have learned that the people who are trustworthy are never Yes, they use that uh, problem as a fertilizer. Climb it. And I showed you guys by examples. Next person. Imani. I've learned that uh, responsible people work well even without supervision. When, in fact, when you are supervising them, they are shining. When you are not supervising them, they are overshining. Self. Thank you. Bring the microphone to Pastor Grace or you don't like her again. It's my wife. We'll let her help you collect. Thank you, sir. I learned that uh, responsibility will make you a leader. And one thing that I really learned is that responsibility is in phases. You cannot say, oh, I'm waiting to get there before if I become I do it. responsible. Because I learned from the life of David that David was, first of all, responsible in family affairs, and God promoted him to, to national affairs. In the case of uh, Joseph, is the same thing. He started from being responsible in uh, Potiphar's house, and God promoted him to become to a national. So he's in phases. So anywhere I enter, I should be responsible there. I should not wait until I become apostle before I, before I become responsible. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who have learned something that is funny you and you want to say it? This is a charity. Yeah, it gives a charity. She must have learned something. Yes. What have you learned? You don't want to speak English today. Eh? I know you can speak English. All right. Is anybody else? You have learned something. Sister Reba, can you come? Good Sister Reba. Look uh, please. Let your eyes catch in a responsible way. Huh? Yeah, move quickly, quickly. What have you learned? I've learned that responsible people add value to other people. Thank you. Add value to other people no matter what you are passing through. That girl was a slave. She was still adding value to Neiman, the, the, the general. Add value to anybody. Always try to discover what can I do to add value to make this like man's life better. No matter who he is. You will find. Wait, look at me, everybody. Anytime you are looking at people and you say, what can I do to add value to this person? You will find. There's nobody that has everything on earth. There's not one person. Everybody has a deficiency. Part time. Do you know there are times biscuit is very important to me, biscuit. I can buy a lot of biscuits, but now there are times when I come to this site in those early days and work is serious and I'm with them, ordering for them to bring stone. Sometimes I'll be looking for biscuits in this site, in those days. Biscuit. <laughs> I'm telling you. If you get to my house, the biscuit has filled up the fridge everywhere. There's biscuit. But on this side, there was no biscuit. So when one of the laborers buy me biscuit. That guy is an important guy to me that day. See, when you look at people, no matter how big they are, there is something that you can do in their life that will change their story. Part time. Now, if when I'm carrying a bag of biscuit, you now bring biscuit, I may not respect your biscuit. But when I don't have biscuit, and the biscuit is far fetched, it's very far at home, and I'm hungry, your biscuit will be a major biscuit on enter. Always look. What can I do to add value to this person now? There is always something to do to make something better. That's how responsible people think. Everywhere you go to, what do I do to add value to this place? Huh? Look at the church. Aye. What do I do? When you do something, you change the whole place. Are you understanding me? It was somebody that said, no, we need to put balloon 
and all these things. Somebody did it, not me. Somebody said, we need to put flower here. The flower, let there be flower here. And began to say, let's put, and the flowers are here. But this place has been for a while, and there were no flowers there. And then many of us are very happy. But child, apostle is crying. Apostle, ah, that guy. <laughs> are you understanding me? Always make it your lifestyle. What do I do to add value? What do I do to improve? Every day, add value. Every day, add value to something. That's how responsible people behave. Let's stop there today. Hallelujah. All right, I declare everybody blessed. The spirit of being responsible that have entered you will never leave. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want to remind you of something. Shine away from doing what you can do. It's not a sign that you are a very nice person. It's a sign that you are irresponsible. Until you shy away, shy away until there's a problem. And you can solve the problem. If you woke up and did it, without it there will not be a problem. You are very responsible. You are useless. Not pretending. <laughs> and you know what to do. It's not humility. It is being irresponsible. That could be your chance to rise and change the nation. But you are quiet. <laughs> I don't want them to disturb me. I don't want them to leave me alone. And they are not begging you. You are an irresponsible person. Why don't you rise up and say, I can do it, and let them say, we don't want you to do it. Let it be on record. That you rose up to do it, and they didn't give you opportunity. That is better for you than you kept quiet. That lady opened her mouth and spoke, and Neman got killed. Let her speak, and they say, we don't. Shut up. You are a slave. And let Neman go and die of leprosy. Nobody will blame her. If she gets to heaven, nobody will blame her. That she knew what that killed Neman, and she never did anything about it. But she spoke. What if you also rose up, and they give you the opportunity? What would have happened? Life would have gotten better. And now nobody's life is better, including yours, because you never spoke. Stop shying away. I said, no, let me be careful. Let me just stay. <laughs> you know, I won't do it. <laughs> let them just leave me. It is making sure that you are wasted, wasting all the opportunities God gave you. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Now, teacher, uh, Bible study teacher, please come and take over.